Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Time Out of Joint by Philip K. Dick, a classic science fiction. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and look at my tabs, and I'll share my overall thoughts on rating at the end. So, how would you feel if solid objects began to dematerialise in front of your very eyes? When a soft drink stand does just that in front of Regal Gum, he thinks he's having a nervous breakdown. He puts it down to stress. Every day, Regal sends in his entry to the competition in the Gazette. Every day, he's a surefire winner. He's a local celebrity, a hero with a position in town to maintain. Despite having no job, Regal is under pressure. Pressure to win. But as weird things continue to happen to him, Regal's anxiety turns to paranoia. He thinks he's at the centre of the universe, then that they, whoever they may be, are out to get him. As his desperation grows, he realises that it's all very well being the centre of the universe, but only if you know which universe. Uh, so right at the beginning uh, we get, uh, anyway, anyhow, I don't think there's going to be any depression, that's just democratic talk. I'm so tired of those old democrats trying to make out like the economy's going to bust down or something. Aren't you a democrat, he asked, from the south? Not anymore, not since I moved up here. This is a republican state, so I'm a republican. I've never got that thing of voting, where people are like, allow their vote to be defined by where they come from, it's very weird. We get a little bit of chat about the Book of the Month Club, which I thought was cool because that's still going. Uh, so the current Book of the Month selection is a ho historical novel about the South, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Someone gets offered here, look. I'm real hungry, Sammy said, gasping. Can I have one of those frozen hamburgers? You don't have to cook it. I'll eat it like it is. It's better that way. Lasts longer. What, like, actually frozen? Is it at least defrosted? I don't know. I don't know if you're supposed to eat raw meat. I, I don't eat any animal products, me. But yeah, and as we've seen from the blurb, this guy gets like addicted to these uh, contests. So I'm going to read this little bit out for you. For each day's contest, the newspaper presented a series of clues, and these always got read by him as a preliminary to the task of solving the problem itself. The problem, of course, was to select the proper square from the 1,208 in the form. The clues did not give any help, but he assumed that in some peripheral fashion they contained data, and he memorised them as a matter of habit, hoping that their message would reach him subliminally, since it never did, literally. A swallow is as great as a mile. Some oblique stream of conscious, some oblique stream of association process, perhaps. He let the crypticism lie about in his mind, sinking down layer by layer, to trip reflexes or whatever. Swallow suggested the process of eating, and of course flying. Wasn't flying a symbol of sex? And Swallows returned to Capistrano, which was in California. The rest of the phrase reminded him of a missus as good as a mile. Why great then, instead of good? Great suggested whales, the great white whale. Ah, association at work. Flying over the water, possibly toward California. Then he thought of the ark and the dove. Olive branch, grease. That meant cooking. Greeks operate restaurants. Eating again. Sensible. And doves were a gourmet's delight. So a guy goes, uh, pants. The other day I asked myself, what's the psychological reason for my admiring women in pants? And then I said to myself, why the hell not? And then the woman he's talking to says, thank you, I guess. And here we have Regal said, you're a very attractive looking woman, June. Thank you, she said, smiling up at him. That's all, that's all women are for, I guess. Obviously a joke, obviously a joke. We get this little exchange. Watch this, he said to himself, bending over the apparently sleeping girl. He said, im amfang vadi tat. Go to hell, she murmured. Do you know what that means? No. Do you care? Rousing herself, she opened her eyes and said, You know the only language I ever took was two years of Spanish in high school. So don't rub it in. So don't rub it in. I actually don't know what it means. Amfang. I should know what that means because I'm familiar with that word. And then tat, I, I guess, is by the looks of the structure of the sentence is a noun, but I don't know what noun. He gets a telephone book and I get... I thought this was funny because they're still around, obviously. The exchanges were unfamiliar to him. Florian, Edwards, Lakeside, Walnut. He turned the pages, not searching for anything in particular. What was there to search for? Anything, he thought. Out of the ordinary. Something that would leap up and hit him in the eye. For instance, he could not tell how old the book was. Last year's? Ten years ago? How long had there been printed phone books? And that's actually because it's a phone book from the real reality, not the reality that he's in. And we get a photo of Marilyn Monroe and it says, Under the picture was the caption, Marilyn Monroe during her visit to England in connection with the filming of her picture with Sir Lawrence Olivier. And um, obviously Marilyn Monroe is fairly famous, but no one seems to have heard of her. So that's another indication that the reality is all wrong. We get a mention of Robinson Crusoe uh, because the, the guy picks out the name Selkirk and, uh, and they're asked, like, what does it suggest to you? Uh, Regal thought about it. Maybe I saw the name when I was going through the phone book. These damn associations, he thought, as in the puzzle clues. 
No matter how hard a person tried, he never got them under control. They continued to run him. I have it, he said finally. The man that the book Robinson Crusoe was based on, Alexander Selkirk. Someone says a whole psychological technique could be erected on how people act when they're startled before they have time to think. Shame about the use of the word erected though, that's, you know, unfortunate. And uh, he's thinking the world revolves around him and it says here, he closed the door after him and joined, a, joined the line. Nobody paid any attention to him. This is the one time I wish my psychosis would come true, he thought to himself. I'd like to have all this revolve around me, at least to the extent of making the ticket window available to me. And we get a uh, shout out to Jack Let. We get a shout out to Jack Daniel's Black Label, which of course our main character has never heard of because he's from a weird reality. And we also get another reference to Uncle Tom's Cabin near the end. Uh, I don't want to go into too much detail about it because A, it's quite confusing and B, it's kind of spoiler territory. But it was an interesting little read and um, it kind of reminded me of the Truman Show. So he's living in this kind of artificial reality that's been specifically created for him. And the crossword or the puzzle puzzles he does in the newspaper, he's actually decoding like attack plans um, where, because there's a war between the Earthmen and the lunatics, the people of Mars, who are basically, it's basically a war between expansionists and non-expansionists. So the people who live on Mars came from Earth originally. It's, yeah, interesting. It was written in 1959 or published in 59, so, you know, way ahead of... Uh, things like the space race and the first man on the moon which was 69 i think sputnik went up the year this came out so it kind of gives you a feel for how like timely i guess all of that stuff is uh overall it was a decent enough read but it was quite jerky when going between the one reality and the other it got like hard to follow at some points and um i you know i wasn't particularly sympathetic to any of the characters uh, overall I give it 3.5 out of 5. I feel like there are better versions of this kind of story But this is probably one of the first ones and where they all got inspired by and uh, you know, it's Philip K. Dick So yeah, it was alright 3.5 out of 5 So there we have it. That's what I thought of Time Out of Joined by Philip K. Dick As always don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye